Hi guys, here I am taking this old English toffee tin and giving it a quick sand on the surface after I pull the label off because I'm really thinking I want to see if I can paint on top of it. I don't know where the can came from. It was in my stash of stuff in my bin of salvage. Um, it was probably gifted to me by somebody, I don't know who. Uh, it measures about four inches square and it's just shy of three quarter inches deep, FYI. I'm using a few shades of blue India ink and acrylic ink along with some white, uh, just dripping it on the top of the tin. And then I'll be pushing it around with a paintbrush, getting something that's abstracted and watery and um, something that I like, maybe something suggestive of a bright summer sky, um, again, or water. And because the ink is, of course, not being absorbed into the metal because hello it's metal um, it kind of pools and puddles on the tin um, so you just kind of keep pushing at it and working with it until you get some kind of pattern that you like and then honestly just let it sit and dry um, it will dry eventually it did take a really long time once it's completely dry then I wanted to go ahead and put uh, something else on top of that. So here we are after a couple of days and I'm taking a white acrylic sharpie paint pen and I'm going to start with uh, masking out the shape of a potted cactus plant. I'm going to start by drawing an outline and then I'm going to fill it in with a white sharpie paint pen so that the colors of our cactus will really pop and be bright and vibrant when I put the actual color on over that blue background. I'm not pushing very hard with the Sharpie. I'm keeping it as a light touch. I don't want to push too hard because I don't want the ink, although it is dry, to peel up or do something else weird because it's sitting on top of metal, which is not the surface it's intended for and that it was created for. Um, so I'm being very conscientious of the fact that all these materials that I'm using to paint this image on this tin are intended for paper or other absorbent materials. They're not intended for metal. And so although they're dry, um, I don't want to push too hard and um, take a chance of messing up the pre prior layer. You do want to have this sort of white shape on here so that the next layer of paint, which is acrylic paint, um, will be as bright and vibrant as possible um, over that blue background. I'm using primarily Dina Wigley Media Paint. I do like her paint very much. I think it's a great alternative. Um, to expensive artist paints for especially for art journaling and these kind of product projects So I'm preparing my little small palette with a few colors of green uh, pink gray white and that those sorts of colors and then once I have my palette ready we are going to paint our little cactus in and Then again, let that dry completely so I'm going to speed forward through the process there of painting the cactus and I'll be right back.
Okay, so although I added shadow and highlights with the paint, I did feel that it needed some actual black sketchy marks. So I have another acrylic paint pen here in my hand. This is a black one, and I am just tracing out the basic shape of my little pot of cactus and not being super neat about it because I want loose sketchy lines. Again, as with the prior steps, you need to let this dry completely before you do anything else. I decide to emphasize little, the little spiky thorns on the cactus by adding these little uh, cross marks. And um, boy, that drawing came out super cute. Super, super cute. So then the next thing to figure out was how the heck to seal this on here so it doesn't all peel off and rub off. So then I thought, well, I've got this old bottle of glossy accents that actually the original bottle clogged up. So I put it in this needle tip applicator. And I thought, I wonder if I give it one or two coats of glossy accents, being very careful to pop the bubbles and kind of spread it thin. I use um, the palette knife and um, spread it out pretty thin. And I actually do this a couple times, um, not only because I wanted to make sure it was covered, but I stuck my finger in it a couple times. So, because you know, I was looking at it and it wasn't dry completely. So when you do this step, people, let it dry completely. That would be my tip to you for the day. So I just took some time to make sure that I had everything I needed to have covered, covered. I wiped up the excess. I popped any bubbles. I will tell you that the glossy accents reactivated some of the ink in the background. So I had to be very careful about which way I pushed the glossy accents around so that it didn't bring the ink over onto the cactus painting. So that was an interesting I guess chemical reaction, I don't know, it was interesting. Once you do this part and you have it thoroughly covered and you're happy and satisfied, then let it dry completely before you do anything else to it. And sorry there, my head's in the way because I'm really like having fun and I've kind of forgotten the camera's on, to be really honest. So there it is. See, I stuck my finger in it. Told you. <laughs> so I stuck my finger in it. So then I just had to put some more glossy accents on there. And on to be really honest, I did that a couple times. Once it dries it and it's dry completely, um, then you're going to just be amazed at the transformation in the tin. It's really cute whether you use it as I did or you use it for something else. It's a cute idea to just experiment with. My next experiment will be taking some of these pencil and crayon tins that I have from like, you know, Faber-Castell pencils and seeing if I can get the ink off of them, or I'm sorry, the enamel paint off of them and bring them back to bare metal and then paint on them. That would be interesting. You can see right here at the bottom on the pot where I was talking about the glossy accents um, re-wetting or reactivating the ink and then I didn't know it did that and then it pushed it right up onto the pot. I do end up fixing it just FYI and after sticking my finger in it and fix, then having to fix it and not mess up the painting I do set it up aside and set it up out of the way and make sure that I don't do it again. <laughs> okay once you've let it dry completely here is the finished uh, watercolor palette. I've slowed down this video clip a little bit and uh, the lid is completely dry and turned out super cute. You could of course fill it with anything. I chose to take some of my watercolor half pans and some um, adhesive putty and glue them into the tin um, using my favorite muted colors or desert landscape colors in the palette. These are some of my favorite colors to paint with. And then of course I made a color key. My only beef is that the lid, inside of the lid is silver. I do later on find a solution for that, which is a piece of magnetic vent cover, which is white. Solve the problem like a charm. So anyway, I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with your tin. Don't forget to go out and try this get a candy tin or an old pencil tin, think about decorating it, painting it, repurposing it maybe for your watercolors or other art supplies, 
And above all, have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.